Hello, my name is Matt Gorbett, and I'm going to talk about the paper Utilizing Network Features to Detect Erroneous Inputs with the help of my advisor, Nathaniel Blanchard. So when do neural networks misbehave? The answer is a lot. There's all kinds of different cases where a neural network will fail to correctly process an input and will give us an incorrect result. There's misclassified images, there's out of domain images, corrupted images, and adversarial images. And all of these are studied largely on their own, in their own domains of research. In this paper, we look at several different cases when a neural network will misbehave and title these erroneous examples. So a few research papers have jointly identified the four types of erroneous inputs shown above. However, none has combined all four types. So why do we care about this? Well, we want to enhance the reliability and safety of AI. There are numerous safety critical AI applications such as autonomous driving and medical devices. And each of those has their own threats such as malicious actors and distorted examples and poorly trained models, unseen examples and limited knowledge models. The list goes on. Here I show several papers that have been published in the last few years uh, that propose methods for detecting bad inputs. A very popular one is MSP, maximum soft max probability, um, and then outlier exposure as well. These are both models that I look at later in this paper. And you can see that none of these papers have jointly detected these bad inputs. They'll detect one or maybe two, but none have linked all four together. And so there are several other connections between the different erroneous example types. For example, in adversarial examples are natural consequence of test error and noise by Ford. They theoretically link adversarial and corrupted data. Further, Liang at L train models with adversarial examples to detect OOD examples. And finally, Rosa and Bolt in 2019 argued that adversarial examples exist in open space, contra contrary to the popular belief that they are near training examples. So how do we do this? In our proposed method, we take the penultimate layer as well as the sorted softmax layer of a pre-trained model to reject bad examples. We use a linear SVM classifier to separate correct examples from misclassified, out of distribution, adversarial, and corrupted examples. We validate the technique using precision recall, the receiver operating characteristic, and the false positive rate at N metrics. So here is a depiction of our proposed method. So we have the inputs on the left, uh, various erroneous example types, and then a correctly processed example. And these get fed into a pre-trained model, which is the, the black layers in the middle. And we retain the vectors at the final layer, the softmax layer, as well as the hidden activation layer. So that's the second to last layer of the, the pre-trained model. And we train a linear SVM on these activations, and we find that we're able to separate the correct examples from the erroneous examples with high accuracy. So the image on the right is a hyperplane separating the bad examples from the good examples. In this paper, we wanted to have a robust experimental setup. So we use several different data sets and erroneous example types, as well as different models. So for our in-distribution data sets, we use CIFAR-10, Tiny ImageNet, and ImageNet. For our erroneous data sets, we used misclassified examples, which we retained by retrieving examples from the training set whose predictions were wrong, and as well as ImageNet A. For out of distribution data sets, we used CIFAR 100, SVHN, Sun, Places 65, and ImageNet O. 
For corrupted data sets, we use CIFAR-10C, Tiny ImageNet C, and ImageNet C. For adversarial attacks, we use several different methods, including FGSM and PGD attacks. The parameter details of these attacks are in our paper. For the pre-trained models, we used ResNet 50 for CIFAR-10 and ImageNet, and then wide ResNet for tiny ImageNet. And so the table on the right shows how big each data set size was for each different erroneous example type. Here we show the results of our method on the CIFAR-10 and tiny image net data sets. Each row depicts a different erroneous example set. And then at the bottom where it says combined, we have the results for combining all of the erroneous example sets and testing. You can see that the results are best when we use a linear SVM compared to other examples, such as MSP and, and outlier exposure. Our best results were when we augmented an existing technique, outlier exposure, with our linear SVM method. Here are the results of ImageNet with our proposed method. So linear SVM performs best most of the time. We performed some further investigations into this method. First, is our method susceptible to high softmax erroneous examples? We looked at erroneous and correct examples whose maximum softmax probability was very high. We were able to achieve pretty strong results when using the linear SVM as compared to the maximum softmax probability, showing that the high dimensional nature of the linear SVM performed best. Another experiment we did was the leave one out experiment. In this experiment, we left one erroneous data type out during training and used it during test time. Results show that we were able to achieve linear separability with pretty strong scores, even when the linear SVM was not trained on that erroneous set. Further, we, sh we show that each erroneous example set is separable from another. For example, we trained an SVM on corrupted examples and we tested it on misclassified examples and the linear SVM was able to achieve a perfect score compared to maximum softmax probability. So why do we achieve such strong results using this linear SVM method? We hypothesize that it is because of the high dimensional nature of the linear SVM. Contrary to the popular curse of dimensionality, which argues that problems become more difficult in high dimensions, Kanan coined the term blessing of dimensionality, describing scenarios in which complex data is more beneficial. So recently, stochastic separation theorems have been introduced, and they show that data in moderately high dimensions can achieve linear separability of sets with probability close to one. So future work, we could look at natural language processing and see if we achieve the same results in different modals of machine learning. We could also look at more nonlinear methods and test the, the blessing of dimensionality hypothesis. We did find that the uh, radial basis function kernels did not perform well in, uh, with the SVMs, but we did not perform more nonlinear techniques. Also, can a one-class SVM discriminate correct examples without the need for erroneous sets? Thank you.